My nigga. My nigga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? Good morning guys. I got another vlog for you guys. And I was going through uh, YouTube and comments about the 1911, okay? A lot of people, or maybe most people in some cases, 1911 has been around for a very, very long time, okay? The platform of the 1911, design of the 1911 has been around for a very, very, very long time. I see a lot of people judge and hate on the 1911. You gotta remember, the 1911 has been around for a hundred years or more, maybe a hundred, 110, okay? But I know for sure it's over a hundred years old design. Hey, it has won World War One and World War Two. Okay, the U.S. Army has used the 1911 to win those war. Glocks has not been around that long. They are not a hundred hundred year old company. They are not a hundred year old design. Okay, it's a very modern design. Okay, don't be bashing on 1911s just because you may have bought a, a, a 1911 and it malfunctions and this and that, it jams and it doesn't feed right and all that other bullshit. Okay, not all companies make 100% accurate all the time. Okay, and uh, a lot of them are mass production. Okay, so I want to make this video, guys, another video for you guys about the 1911. Okay, if you guys do know Wilson Combat, right? Everybody knows Wilson Combat, okay? Wilson Combat, okay? Everybody knows Wilson Combat. Everybody knows um, Nighthawk Customs, okay? Everybody knows it, okay? Everybody knows. And I'm gonna bust all these out and match for you guys, and just so you see for yourself, okay? Don't be bashing on 1911s. I don't care you have a Kimber. I don't care you got a Darren Wesson. I don't care you got a Smith & Wesson. I don't care you got a Colt. I don't care you got a Rock RA Armory. I don't care if you got a Springfield. I don't care you got a Six Sour 1911. I don't care if you got an STI. I don't care if you got a Wilson Combat 1911. I don't care if you got a Nighthawk 1911. Okay, a 1911 is a 1911. The big, big differences on this modern new age is that the Night, uh, the Nighthawk and Wilson Combat had modernized and upgraded and made changes to make the 1911 a lot better. Way better designed than before. You got bigger, uh, better uh, trigger jobs. You got bigger beer, beaver tails. Okay, back in the old days, you know, that the, the, the beaver tail is very, very small and really, really skinny. Okay, it's very short, it's maybe like maybe a half an inch or something like that. It didn't even fit all the well by your thumb, okay? Don't be dogging the 1911. 1911 has been around for a very, very long time and it's still, to this day, very, very popular, okay? Nighthawk. Everybody knows Nighthawk. Everybody knows Nighthawk, Wolves of Combat, or an STI, are the ex most expensive, okay? Expensive 1911 guns, okay, because they're custom-made, okay now People I see like people on on YouTube are dogging the 1911. Oh the Kimber sucks. Oh the Dan Wesson sucks Oh the Colt competition or the Colt trophy sucks. Oh the Rock Army uh, It's a little bit more cheaper made. It, it looks like it's not nice. It just You know sucks you know, six hours sucks. Oh, Ruger sucks. Duh, 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 okay. Before you own a 1911, you shoot one that's actually really well taken care of, okay? And has their internals polished, okay? And trigger job, uh, hammer polished, barrels polished, the feed rep is polished, the, uh, the main house spring has been tuned, the fire pin has been polished. You do not know how well that 1911 shoots with those. I have a 1911 here, okay? I'm gonna make a video, guys, to make some people stop blaming on this shit. Getting tired of it, okay? So, empty, that thing in the mag, okay? This is a 1911 Kimber. If you take a 1911 and you get it polished 
which is the whole entire hood polished, okay? The barrel has been completely polished, okay? You can see the very, very polished part. When I got this Kimber, only this much was polished. This whole entire back of the barrel all the way to the hood was not polished. It was a really rough texture. I have my 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 uh, uh, my guy, a guru, a 1911 guru, polished the whole entire thing. The hood has been polished completely. The hammer is supposed to be black. It's been polished. You see? It's polished. Okay? The main spring housing has been redone and retuned. My trigger job has been tuned. Okay? The feed ramp. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me grab a goddamn flashlight. I'm getting tired of all these people dogging on 1911 so you guys don't know shit. Okay? The feed ramp. If you guys can see it. I think you got a picture right there. The feed ramp has been polished, okay? You take a 1911 and you polish all the internals, the feed ramp, redone and tune the, uh, the mainspring housing, trigger job, barrel's been polished, the hammer's polished, the fire pin has been polished, okay? It shoot butter, okay? Your grouping will be like this. It's like every time you pull a trigger, it's like that, that fucking bullet, it's like a homing missile, like a seeking missile. It lands on a target exactly where you hit it. My groupings on my 1911s are like this, okay? They're not even that big, okay? On point every fucking time, okay? Fucking at 10 yards, 7 yards, 25 yards, my grouper are like this, okay? Every bullet that I throw in here, it eat it all. Never jams. I have Wilson Combat Mags, okay? Look, these are Wilson Combat Mags. Never have a problem. I had news. Hey, here's another Wilson Combat. Oh, actually, these are Nighthawks. This one, wait, this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, are, are Wilson Combat. This one, and this one, okay? I got a whole bunch of these, okay? Everybody knows Wilson Combat Mags, okay? What was the combat? What was the combat mag? Okay. And the bomb here. See? All was the combat. You put these magazines in it, it will feed. These are Nighthawk custom mags. Okay? These are made from Italy. There's a ACT mag. Okay? From Italy. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's black. I'll try to shine it and see if you guys can see it. Okay, these are made from Italy, okay? These are uh, Nighthawk mags, okay? Nighthawk custom mags. Mike, Mike Kimber takes these mags. Never have a problem. They are good, they are just as good as Wilson Combat mags. Never have a problem, okay? Bullet-wise, I shoot hollow points. These are Hornady hollow points. Full metal jacket. I got like 20 cases of these, 20 of these boxes full of that. Hollow points, Federal Hydroshock, Hornady Hollow Point. Eats them all up. Never had a problem. I don't know why you guys thought these. I had bought so one of those combat mags. They sell the the lead, the head of the uh, the bullet. It's flat, but the head is lead. It's not copper, and it, it points out. A curve like this and the front is flat. Those are really good for practice shooting and for paper targets or or even steel targets. My Kimber, I don't have any more of those for the show because I shot them already. My Kimber take every single one of them and shot every single of those bullet and goes into battery. Okay? You take a, any 1911, I don't care what 1911 do you have, okay? I don't care what 1911 you have. You get a 1911, you get the internals all done. Trigger job, barrel's polished, the rapid feed is polished, the hood of the barrel is polished, the hammer's been polished, the fire pin has been polished, redone uh, 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 mainspring housing, a trigger job. This 1911 here, I have in my hand, shoot as good as is my Nighthawk Custom. 
This gun here, this 1911 here, cost me $5,500, okay? I'll prove it to you. Look, it even says Nighthawk like Custom on it, okay? It comes with everything. It comes with a, a, a Trijicon RMR, a Surefire X300 uh, Ultra Light, Hollow Points, Wilson Combat Max, 10 rounds. This is my most expensive fire 1911 I ever owned. This gun shoots butter. The tight tolerance is impeccable, okay? Difference between a Kimber, okay? You see how the barrel is not flushed in? Right here, behind here, right here, it's not smooth, right here. How the slide meets the frame, it's not smooth. I can feel a little bump there on both sides, okay? You look at the injector, the injector, the the, the injector uh, uh, plug, and the slide on the very bottom here, they're not very flushed in, like very, very close to flushing in. This is half hand fitted and half uh, uh, mass production made. So all these right here are not, uh, it's not fully, like this slide here is not made for this, is not made for this uh, frame. But I can feel that bump, okay, that is not all in one piece. Like this slide is not meant and made for the slide. I mean made for the frame, okay. Any full detail. Now the trigger has a little tiny play to it that goes up and down. This one don't wiggle as much. You grab like a, a rock or iron or or a, or a Colt, you wiggle a little bit. It has a lot of play. My my trigger doesn't have very play, very very minimum play at all. Okay. Also, you get like a rock iron army or American classic 1911. They're not checkered like this. Okay. Now, for the Nighthawk, okay, I want to make sure this bitch is unloaded, okay, you look at the, you look at the barrel and the bushing, you see how crown that is, see how flush that is, you're paying for custom hand fitted, that means this barrel is meant for that bush and is meant for the, uh, the, the, the slide, the top slide assembly, it's made in perfection, it's impeccable. That's why these 1911s, the Nighthawk and the Wizard Combat, they cost so much because everything is perfect. All the crown is flushed in. Nothing's overdone. Nothing's over sticking now compared to my bull barrel. You see how, how far it sticks out of the barrel? This is not made for the gun, but it works, you know, because it's mass production made. Most of it, most of the parts on the Kimber is mostly mass production made, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. I made my gun, I made this Kimber shoot as good as this, okay, or even more, a little more better, okay. For the details like this, okay, you won't get that on a lower, a, uh, a mid or a lower class uh, 1911, such as Rock Armory, Springfield, Sig Sauer, uh, a Dan Wesson, uh, a Kimber, a Colt. You will not find perfect, imp imp perfect, impeccable, flush, fully detailed like that, okay. With just the Kimber, it's almost detailed to it. Not very, because it's mostly hand production. Now you look back back here, the slide and the frame, how it meets together. When you put your hand, you rub it, when your finger, you put down, you rub it, you don't feel a seam, okay? You don't feel any seam at all, okay? It's like this, the slide is made for the frame, because everything on the part, Okay, the, the, the frame, the slide, the barrel, fire pin, the extractor, the trigger, everything. It's been oversized and hand fitted by a gunsmith. It's been filed down, beat down, filed, sanding, grinding to its perfection. That's why Nighthawk Customs cost so freaking much because it's so much labor. It's all hand fitted, all handmade. Nothing on the Nighthawk or the Wolves of Combat has been uh, mass production made. Everything is oversized. They have to cut every single thing down, make it to the exact, very perfect, perfect, impeccable, fitted together as one. Okay, my trigger on my 19 uh, on my 1911 Nighthawk has no play whatsoever. I don't even hear a goddamn rattle in there, okay? The slide and the frame is flush. I don't feel a seam, I don't feel a gap, it's all in one. 
my barrel, okay, my barrel is flushed in with the bushing, okay, the, the size on the slide on the frame, it's rounded off, it matches perfectly, in a, it's a perfect in line, okay, it's perfectly in line, it's really flat flush, it's curved, nothing sharp, everything is made to imper imperfection, I mean, it's made for perfection, okay, it's impeccable, the Kimber, see how the, I see a, a little grab here, see how the slide, the top of the slide and the bottom of the frame, well actually it's still a part of the barrel, but there's the frame, okay, this is the frame, this is the slot, but you see how it angles down like that, it's not perfect, you see that, the Nighthawk is perfect then, okay, nice, smooth, round off, everything is perfect on the slide and the frame, it blends in perfectly. The Kimber, however, it's not, okay? It's not perfect, okay? Close, but not perfect, okay? This is half custom fitted and half, uh, and uh, I say, let me break it down a little more for you guys to understand. I say maybe 30, no, let's say about 40, 45, maybe 50% this was custom made, okay? Everything else on, on the Kimber is mass production made by machines which mean like the bull barrel okay the 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 bull barrel the trigger the hammer and probably the 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 firing pin are are, are custom made by hand assembly by hand everything else the slide the frame the magwell okay uh all that is mass production which means, mass production means they have a big ass machine makes a thousand of those slides, a thousand of those frames, a thousand of those uh, mainstream housing, like a whole bunch of them, not, by, not, not produced by hand, but produced by machine like Glocks. Everything on a Glock is, is like mass production. Nothing in there is handmade, okay? If, if you get like, okay, you know the hood of your Glock? Take your thumb and push it down, okay? If it rattles, it's not handmade. It's all mass production. They just buy all. They just, they just grab a whole bunch of parts that are made by machine and put it together just like that. Nothing is in there as perfection. That's why you, when you push down on the barrel of the hood of your Glock, it rattles, it moves. If I push my thumb on this right here right now, it doesn't move. It's tight, okay? I'm, you hear any rattle? Nothing. Here's the barrel hood of my Nighthawk. I'm pushing down the, on, the, on the hood of the barrel. No rattle, no nothing. Glocks, however, they rattle and they move, okay? Big, big, big difference, guys. If you get any cheap 1911, and you know a person that works with polish can get the internals done on your 1911, your 1911 will shoot as good or maybe even a little bit more better than a Nighthawk Custom or a Wilson Combat. Okay, take my word for it. Everything I paid, I'm not gonna spread out his business because he doesn't want to go with social, okay? But I got the barrel done, the whole entire barrel, the hood, the hammer, the hammer was black when I first got it, okay? It's polished now. My feed ramp, my spring, my main spring houses have been redone, my trigger job's been redone, all of that for $120, okay? Turnaround was like a week, or most is probably four days. Okay, if you can get a Rock Iron Ironman, a Ruger, a Six Sour 1911, a Rock Iron, uh, Rock, uh, Iron Army, a American Classic, okay, a Colt, a Smith & Wesson, a, um, what's another 1911 out there, uh, Kimber, okay, you take any of those 1911s and you, you give to someone that can posture it or you can do it yourself if you know how, okay, you polish all that stuff inside. It will shoot so smooth and so butter and you make the gun more reliable and trustworthy to trust your life with this. It's very worth it. For $120, it's very, very worth it. My gun, this 1911 here, I carry this every day. It gets scratched, it gets dinged, holster wear and all that. I don't really give a fuck because this is, this is my 1911. Retail on this is $3,200 $3, to $3,800 brand new. I bought this on Black Friday last year before November for a thousand dollars and I and I invested a hundred twenty dollars 
for the parsing job and 50 bucks for the the night sights. I have true grow uh, true grow sights on mine. Okay, that's all I did. And then I put Wilson Combat G10 starter grips. That was it. Shoots impeccable. My grouping was good, tight. This gun, I throw every single bullet I just showed you. It eats it all. No problem. It will always shoot. It will always fire. It will land a bullet where it wants to go, and it always go to the battery. I never had a problem with my 1911. Never. I carry this every day and I trust this with my life. However, my Nighthawk is the most expensive 1911 I ever owned. This is for home defense and for range use only. This is this one here is very expensive. I paid $5,500 for this, okay? $5,500 just the way it is. It came with all that. The RMR and the flashlight and the gun itself. It cost $5,500. This, I can pass it down traditionally to my family. I can pass it down to my son, my, my nephew. And as he grows over, as he goes, as they grow older, they can pass it down to their kids, their, and then my grandchildren and my grandchildren. This gun will be around forever, okay, forever. This gun is made so tight, and it shoots really smooth, but it's really tight. There's more love and care and more minutes on these than compared to a lower version 1911. This one here, you have to lube it a lot more. You gotta wipe it down more. Every two, every 150 to 200 shots, you gotta lube the slide. Cause as you shoot, the carbon builds up inside. It start, it start to, it, it, it start to get a little, a little. It won't go in the battery completely. And the reason why, cause the slide and the frame is made so tight. It's so custom. If you have, if I shot 150 rounds or 200 rounds, I have to flip this upside down and, and loop the slide on both sides and the hood and the barrel and rack a little bit let the, let the loop go in there a little bit and continue shooting i don't have to take this gun fully apart i can just keep doing it every every 150 to 200 shots and it'll just shoot just fine i had shot like 700 rounds and i did the same procedure i will open the slide okay i will loop loop down the, the rails where the meets the slide at i will loop down I will loop the barrel, I will loop the hood of the barrel and, continue, and keep racking like this so the oil will go back and forth a little bit, a little loop a little bit and continue firing. No problem. This is how the way this night halt works. Okay. I don't know about the Wilson Combat because I don't have one yet. I'm planning to get one. I'm planning to get a 4 inch 1911 professional. So if I do lose this in the future or get this confiscated from police after I shot someone in the line of defense, I have my Wilson Combat I'll use it for backup. I'm also planning on being. A, I'm also planning on getting a Dan Weston in the future too, as well. But if I get that Dan Weston, I'm gonna take that in and give it to my guy, and he's gonna polish the exact same thing as this gun. Okay, polish the hood, the barrel, the hammer, the firing pin, do a trigger job, retune the uh, the mainspring housing on it. On the on the Dan Weston, I'm gonna get. I'm probably get a Raptor one, or I'll probably get the um, the other one. But anyhow, get that thing polished and done. It will shoot as good as a fucking Nighthawk Custom or a Wilson Combat, okay? You guys out there are dogging 1911, stop doing that. If you don't own one, you don't know anything about it very much, then don't be too judgmental and say, Oh, they, a 1911 Kimber sucks. Oh, the Ruger 1911 sucks. Oh, the Springfield Armory 1911 sucks. No, 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 okay? You, you don't know shit about it, okay? So, you get any 1911. Okay, any 1911, no matter how cheap it is, or how mid expensive it is, or high class. Well, I don't, I'm not planning to polish my Nikon Custom, I'm leaving the way it is because I think it's too expensive. But if you get like a mid class, like a thousand, eight hundred, five hundred, or even three hundred dollar 1911, you get the internals done, you will shoot just as good as a Wilson Combat, or shoot as just good as a Nikon Custom. Okay, take my word for it. This is proven. Okay, until then, peace.